sometimes I'm compelled by the Lord to uh, to share some testimonies, some things that have happened that uh, since I become a Christian 26 years ago, nearly 27 years ago now, and um, and I, I was I was just speaking to a lady who's got in her 70s, and um, I was talking to her about when my my own dad um, passed away what, just over two years ago, and uh, he went to be with the Lord. And I'm, I, I, I was just talking to her, and I was saying to her about how my dad, even though he believed in God all of his life, he was raised to believe in the Christian religion. So he, you know, he, he knew exactly, um, you know, who to call on if he knew, he knew that it was Jesus is the Lord. But yet, uh, my dad never had no time for God. And to be fair, he was quite an argumentative man against the Bible um, for, for most of the years, because of course, you know, he didn't know the Lord. So, um, but nevertheless, is that. Uh, so I, I was always scared that, you know, he's going to just die on a shovel. You know, if you dig in, because my dad worked harder than any man I'd ever known. And uh, was a great dad and a, a great, great, great dad to me and a, a great um, husband to my mother. And just, but just worked like a Trojan all of his life and done the most incredible things. But uh, but he didn't have no time for God. And whenever I, when I got saved 20, nearly 27 years ago and I come back and I start telling him about Jesus, about he had to repent of his sin, give his life to the Lord, you know, to have a place in heaven. To have his sins forgiven so he don't end up in the fires of hell um it, to be fair you know he, he just uh, he said to me once he said listen stanley he said he said don't don't keep talking to me about this you know he'd really had enough and uh he said you know you believe in prayer so i went yeah i believe in prayer dad he said well let me tell you this he said you pr don't talk to me anymore about the lord he said but pray for me you believe in prayer he said pray that god will save me so i went all right dad i will and my dad was angry at the time, so I, I, I know when to sharp when my dad was angry. And um, But anyway, so uh, I'll be honest, I couldn't stop talking to him about the Lord. I spoke, spoke to him about the Lord right, right throughout, you know, the rest of his life, um, here and there. But um, but anyway, is that, so, so I was telling this this old lady who got in her 70s, I was saying how my dad, you know, tragically, when he was nearly 85, he, he got pancreas cancer. So he just had like six weeks to live. And he was in terrible pain and he was my dad was a very tough man so uh you know but for him to be in pain he was in terrible pain and um me and my mother we nursed him we looked after him and uh but anyway about three weeks into his uh, his illness and, and dying he was in hospital and me and my mum you know i'd uh visit him every day and uh, i was praying for him all the time I and mean, my mum was as well and one day i want to see him and, and mum was there and he, he sat forward and uh, managed to sit himself up and he was he'd lost stones and stones of body fat or body and weight you know muscle weight and uh it, 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 he sat up and he, he his face shone like an angel he like shone like the shekinah glory of god he had spark in his eye and uh and he told me about jesus and um and he, he said he wasn't scared of dying because he knew where he was going hallelujah so all my prayers all those years please lord god save my dad god answered my prayers and my dad was telling me this but in, in his hospital bed anyway at the moment he stopped talking about the lord he looked over my shoulder and his eyes lost the sparkle the face lost the shine and he went back into being just like a dying man and uh, and of course he was on a spiral downwards and eventually he passed away to be with the lord in my in my house in my mum's that mum and dad's house um in my old bedroom actually and uh, my mum putting her fingers through his hair and when he went and uh it was it was a horrific time for uh, for anyone that's ever seen anyone pass away or die of cancer it's horrific but yeah it was absolutely wonderful to know that my dad had got a place in heaven and he had got he wasn't scared of dying because he got he knew where he was going and uh and during that time you know my when my dad was part dying you know he never swore he never grumbled you know he, he, he never moaned you know about anything or about anybody you know he, he he was looking forward to going to be with the lord and um so i was telling this lady this anyway and this old lady she said to me she said well that's me she said i, I, I know that i believe she said because it's the first time i ever met this old lady well i met i think years ago 20 years ago but i didn't know at the time i would meet her again and uh she asked, did she come in the gym and for with a friend and never came back that's what it was so how, how i knew her but um, so anyway, so I, of course, I'm saying to her about my dad. And she's, oh, yes, I believe in God. She said, I do. She's, I believe there's an up there. She said, and a down there, she said. And I'm going to go up there, she said. She's because she said, I, me, I've never done anything wrong, she said. So, you know, to her, that was her way of knowing that she was going to heaven because she'd never done anything wrong. 
anyway so i said to her listen i said the bible says that god says in the scripture that all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of god everyone has done wrong we've all broken god's laws we've all done wrong i said and, and uh i had a short conversation with us we've all done wrong i said and we we need to acknowledge to christ because that's why god became flesh and died on, on the cross at calvary to pay the death penalty for our sins for the sins of the entire world he rose again on that third day and for all that call on the name of the lord they can have their sins forgiven if they ask and they give their life to christ and they get a place in heaven they have a relationship with god begins from that moment when they repent and give their life to the lord so i said so the important thing is i said is to is to recognize that you have we have done things wrong i said and we need to ask jesus to forgive our sin and give up our life to the lord to have that place in heaven it's not just i said these things and anyway then then there was a lorry pulled in and she laid out to get out so i blessed her in jesus name and off she went but it just came to me and maybe it may be the holy spirit was just you know speaking to me god was showing me you know that, that, that many people when they when they go through their lives are always aware of other people which are very wicked you know people people you may only know about through the news and the newspapers and people that you never meet perhaps you know or, or perhaps it's some people that we have met and you know we've met something perhaps or known of some really horrible wicked very evil people that have done the most atrocious things and uh, we may have read about these people or so ever and uh, and of course we think to ourselves or so many of us we think we're good people you know that uh, that we're good and you know because of our goodness then of course you know we're going up we're not going down we're not going to hell we're going up because we're good people and the thing is is that you know that self-righteousness of uh, of believing that we're good people when when in fact you know we've all lied you know we, we we've all broken god's laws at different times in our lives and uh and that and that therefore the bible says because we've lied for instance one thing the bible says is that all liars go to hell that means if you if it, me and you have ever told a white lie even just a white lie just a lie and something that's not true we're going to hell i was speaking to a guy the other day he went but stan he said he said well fornication sex outside marriage he said who, who hasn't done that he said if they're an adult and they've grown up he said who has not done that i said this is the whole point i said i said but it's called fornication i said people have got people in god's sight with uh, a man and a woman has to be married before they make love before before they have um you know they enjoy uh, sexual relationships uh, with each other and uh, and in marriage it's beautiful it's wonderful it's you know all been given to you and designed by god and it's incredible but it's just for within marriage it's not designed outside marriage so if anyone has committed fornication then then they're going to hell if homosexuals if anyone has committed the sin of homosexuality the scripture says against god's law it says it's in, and the new testament says that homosexuals are not inherit the kingdom of god um you know so it basically is like you know everyone has sinned one way or the other everyone's broken god's laws in some respect that, that everybody all nearly all of us um have had sex outside marriage at some point you know, as we're growing up um you know and uh, and to us it's just like normal behavior well that's because we live in a sinful uh, a sinful world we've pulled it for and we're because we have got this inherited sinful nature which causes us to uh to to, to 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 take no notice of what god wants but to only live for ourselves and and to and to fulfill our own uh our own desires our own needs and to and you know to basically um you know look after ourselves um now the thing is is the fact that you know the scripture makes it quite plain that you know whether you've broken one law or the other is that if you're if you've broken god's law then you're a lawbreaker and it means you're condemned before god it means that you're condemned it means that you when you die you go to hell it means you stand then we wait in hell there's millions of people in hell right now waiting for judgment and at the point of judgment you come before the lord you then answerable for you come before god you come before god the older people in hell come before god and they're answerable to god why they how they lived the lives they lived why they made the decisions they made every 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 motive of the heart is laid bare every thought they've ever had every action that ever everything is laid bare before a holy god who knows all things and they're answerable and then they and then god is vindicated because you know they'll know why they're going to the lake of fire because they deserve to go there because of their sinful uh, wicked evil life and um and god's idea of wickedness is worse than ours i mean you know we we overlook a little bit of lying we overlook a little bit of you know we overlook sin we god does not overlook sin that's why god became flesh and died on a cross to pay the death penalty for the sins of the entire world rising again that horrific death that christ went through was to pay for your sins and mine 
So God doesn't overlook sin. So if we come to Jesus, we can have all our sins forgiven and, and receive a new life and have God come and live in us by his spirit. Therefore, we end up, as God works in our life throughout our life, it's called progressive sanctification, God cleans up our life so we end up doing the, th the things we were doing wrong we end up doing less and less until eventually we're not doing those things wrong anymore because we then started to have an inner desire to want to live for god an inner desire to want to please god because god comes into our life and it fantastically uh, causes us to have this 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 uh this desire to uh, to please to please our lord and it all comes by a relationship that god gives us with himself through jesus christ our lord and savior so it's incredible you know the christian life so so I, it was it came to me is that there, there, there may be people be people listening to this um to this message today and you've been sitting here today and you've been thinking well i always thought i was a good person i thought well you know if there's a god i'm going to be received into the kingdom of heaven because i'm a good person you know i'm not like i'm not one of these horrible people i'm a nice person i should be going to heaven i'm sure of that well now god's ruling to us today yeah okay it's you know but what god says about us he knows everything and he knows we've all sinned we've all done things that are wrong you know we've all at times we've stolen you know we've we've took perhaps things from for perhaps some work you know perks or you know we've not been entirely honest with our you know um with, with our uh, proceedings and that's it's stealing and so therefore you've lied we've stolen um you know this you look even just for the ten commandments and you find that you know you've not you've not kept them all and um and of course the greatest one is the great is to love the lord your god with all your heart all your mind all your soul all your strength to put god first in your life to not bow down to not have any idols no no idolatry in your life you know we none of us have loved god like that and so and we've all put other things before god which is a sense in idolatry we've all put other things before god so you know we are utterly a sinful people condemned before god you die in the night you go to hell you come before god on judgment day you're answerable you understand why you're going to the lake of fire you spend your turn in the lake of fire hallelujah you know that's not what god wants he doesn't want you to go there he does not want you to go or me to go to that place jesus saved me 20 30, 27 years ago gave me a place in heaven and guess what if you turn to jesus today and you ask jesus to forgive all your sin and give up your life to the lord read the bible a little bit every day find out what god's will is in your life through reading the new testament to start we start off at the book of john new testament you'll find in the first 14 verses very clear jesus is almighty god you became flesh so you know that then you're, you're assured that you're talking to god through jesus christ our lord and uh and god will just renew your mind by the word of god as you repent give your life the lord god come in your life renew your mind clean your life up so whatever you're battling with or struggling with whatever sinful behavior you got in your life which is just destroying your life really it's not making it any better sin that sin might be might be uh uh nice just for a short while but it, all, it always turns to corruption it always turns bad N nothing good ever ever lasting comes out of sin it's you know it doesn't and that's what god wants to deliver us from it so he gives us a happy and a more joyful life knowing him a life where where we, where we can be of 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 we of wor a worthwhile life where we can know god and we can encourage others so that when eventually you say for instance you come to the lord today so say you repent give your life to the lord and you find out you know by faith you come to the lord but then god comes into your life and you have this overwhelming relationship with god and you're thinking wow this is fantastic i want to tell i know then you're praying for god to give you the bless you with the holy spirit and empower you to better tell other people and give you the confidence to speak to the people like he's done for me and then your family gets saved your dad gets saved perhaps your mother gets saved and they're still alive or you you know your granny or you know your brother your uncle your your, your, your children you know members of your loved ones can become a christ get saved then you've got the joy of knowing that one day you will all meet up together in heaven and be with them forever you'll have the joy of the lord of your family being with you in the kingdom rather than having so some members of your family in the fires of hell and other members of your family in the fires of hell and 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 you perhaps you know and and then you go into hell and and and, and then other people getting saved after you've died and they perhaps your children get saved and realize oh you know you know it's, it's tragic it's, it's great tragedy to know that a family is going to be split up because we're not all going to the same place but we can if you accept christ and share the gospel of god's love with the, with your loved ones so they can cut also come in knowledge of christ i mean god is a miracle working god i've had my ne i've had my knees healed i've had my shoulder healed i've had miracles i've been put back together again loads of times just through faith and believing in jesus christ asking him and receiving god is a fantastic god listen i've got to go because i've, I've got my my time is is pressed 
and um, and unfortunately i've got to go right now but may the lord bless you i hope that something i've said today has encouraged your faith if you want to contact me you can always contact me and discuss these things i don't even too pleased to pray with you or answer your questions in the future thank you god bless you thank you for listening